Welcome to What the F*** We Do for Intellectual Discussion, What Bobby Brown Did for Whitney Houston. Too soon, right? Oh, sorry about that. Anyways, many dream of being here, but only these four get to live out the dream. But enough about the real housewives of big love. Let's meet our panel. Starting with the far chair, it's Marcom Specials and member of the comedy troops of Urban Squirrels. It's Teresa Condon. She's so hot, Ryan Gosling thinks about her when he's having sex. Uh, by I the way, too. it's the last time I let be. my teenage niece write my edit my script. Um, in the middle chair, she's more adorable than Justin Bieber holding a baby panda. It's library worker Jenna Christ. I'm sorry about that, Jenna. In between them, it's Midget Crusher and that creepy dude that looks at me funny when Uncle Jim isn't around. It's former Starbucks and Pizza Barista James Ilk. Seriously, she's only like 12, dude. Anyway. But she looked 13. Yeah. Ew. Finally, sitting next to me, he's the only man that can show up to my middle school dressed up as Santa Claus without wearing a pillow. It's salesman extraordinaire Scott Berg. It's Scott, sorry about that. I'll have to talk, talk to her parents after the show. Issue number one. Does going to meetings result in our intellect taking a beating? If you work as a team, will the average IQ fall below the mean? Research from Virginia Tech University, <clears throat> go Cavaliers, shows that working in a group makes people perform worse on intelligence tests as some group members are so anxious about doing well that they divert their brain power towards maintaining their social status in the group. Women appear to feel this pressure more than men. The researchers used an MRI scanner to monitor how people's brains responded and found that bad performers tended to show activity in parts of the brain that dealt with emotions and anxiety. I think we have some uh, results, results of the research footage here. Yeah, sorry, we got the wrong footage. I think that was the Nobel Peace Prize de Committee deliberations. Uh, I thought that was the last tailgate party I was at. Uh, really? Well, you hang around some weird people, James. All right, so uh, let's you see here. Uh, Teresa, you buying this? Meetings make uh, you stupid? Yes, I do. I actually attend quite a few meetings at my job. I, I wish more of our meetings would turn out like that, with people dancing around. Okay. I actually, true story, I was trying to organize a flash mob at my work. It was my boss's idea. It was This is true. Okay. And I was supposed to collect a group of people in my office. No one wanted to do it because no one wanted to dance at work and be silly. Um, anyways, moving on. So, yes, I do believe meetings lower your IQ. After one, I tend to feel kind of numb. And I have to go outside and stare at the sunshine for a while. Before Eventually I you recover, it, right? Yeah, that's the thing. It replenishes itself every night. And then you come back to work in the morning and you're like all jazzed, ready to go. Then you have a meeting around 10 a.m. and the rest of the day is shot. All right. Yeah. Jenna, buy this or not? Meetings can have sort of a deadening effect on you, you, yes. Your soul. Your soul, yes. <laughs> yes, it sort of sucks it out and, and squishes it and kind of disperses it. Okay, is this why we don't have meetings before the show? <laughs> I, I thought we did. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> That's how you got me in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. right. So do you feel dumber at meetings? Oh, sometimes yes. <clears throat> I mean, it depends on the group of people and the dynamic. I mean, sometimes if, you know, you're with a group of people that are happy and excited and you're talking about something that you're all interested in, there's a synergy that can make you feel more interested and excited and maybe not dumber. But there are the meetings where people get obsessed with little details and bicker and argue and you just have to sit through it and try and push forward. Yes, then you feel much dumber yeah. afterwards. James, what do you think? Oh, I'm happy about this research, you know, because I'll take any excuse I can get. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Scott, you usually wave your right to a lawyer when you're meeting with the cops. Is, this, is, this, is, that, is that the reason why? Um, well, yeah, one of the reasons. Um, but, uh, you know, I, th I think that there's uh, something that's kind of sorely missed is that uh, I think the meetings are very important so people who are not as bright can keep up and stay up with things. And also, uh, when you have uh, an incessant amount of meetings, uh, I also think it's important because people who normally cannot justify their occupation can then do so by holding those meetings so those people can have some job safety because they just want to sit and talk about pretty much nothing. So I think it's a good thing. That's a good point, Scott. 
So yeah, I, I, th I think it was. I think it was rather harsh. I think this was a rather harsh study. But I'm glad they did it. I'm glad money was well spent on having this done. <laughs> well, no, they probably had a lot of meetings about the research meetings. about meetings. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, maybe it just brings that brings everyone closer to the mean. The smart people get dumber, and the dumb people get smarter. I think the dumb people just got dumber because we all get dumber at meetings. Do we? Okay. I think that's the point. So well, is there we is, can you is there a way that you can make making a meeting more productive versus bad meetings and make everyone stupid? Dancing. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. Dancing I, 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 I believe what we're doing here is is a meeting. Are we all getting dumber? Absolutely. Slowly, uh, yeah. Okay. Slowly but surely. <laughs> good good management of a meeting. Okay. Which I'm not very good at, but you know, just having someone be able to cut people short if they start going off astray. Really? Oh. <laughs> bring people on task. Right. Um, bring up new topics, sort of like what you're doing now, uh, except you keep getting interrupted. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Now you know I don't have any meetings for the show. Mm -hmm. We just kind of do it by do it on the fly, right? Because we're all spontaneous, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And of course, you know, given the previous show where we talked about being more creative when we're drunk, you think if we had more alcohol in meetings, they'd go better? Oh yeah, cookies too. Cookies. Yeah, actually, so it's always yeah. make a meeting go better. Yes, cookies, bring food, muffins, yeah. coffee. Mm -hmm. Except I think uh, you're being a little bit psychic here. Uh, we haven't talked about that yet. Oh okay, well it could be. Uh, <laughs> oh maybe we're right. Uh, yeah, God, did I just lose track of oh, crap? Anyway, uh, meetings do make you dumber. Okay. You no, know, it also helps you travel in time. It only travel in time. But anyway, so let's see here. Uh, all right, all right. Let's just go on to the next story because I think I just finished. I think I just killed this one too much. All right. Issue number two, if you want to break a creative funk, should you just get drunk? And if you're a bore, should you just snore? Wires Jonah Lehrer points out that when our brains focus on a problem, it tends to shine a spotlight on what it considers relevant, ignoring de ideas and connections that aren't likely solutions to your problem. However, when you need to think outside the box, your brain does better without that focus because it considers a wider variety of information. Research results show that people with attention deficits were twice as successful at creative problem solving as normal folks. And sleepy or drunk college students were better than their awake weak and sober counterparts. For more, we turn to our science correspondent, Sven Drunksberg. Sven, your thoughts? Teresa, what did I? I know your brother wants to get on the show, but you know you shouldn't be swapping out our our, our, our web videos here. I know? wish I danced as well as he does. Oh, very I'm much. Jealous. Well, you're, so you're, you didn't you didn't get all the you didn't get the dancing jeans from your 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 brother got the dancing jeans. No. Oh. Unfortunately, he doesn't like to dance as much, just with alcohol. Oh, just without. Just I like, love dancing, but I'm bad at it. Okay. When you say dancing with alcohol, you mean consuming alcohol? Yeah. Or just with the bottles. Of alcohol? Oh no, after consuming, and then like he likes to carry them around. And, carry them around. I like yeah. to dance with the bottle, actually. You actually dance yeah. with the bottle? Yeah. yeah. Okay, one bottle or two bottles? Uh, two, obviously. Or, or sometimes <laughs> with a keg. Do you dance with a keg? Uh, only for short periods, unless it's empty. Unless it's empty. <laughs> We're we talking like the the full size keg. We're talking the pony keg. Mm, no, I go for the man size. You go for the man size. All right. So you you buy in this theory that uh, that uh, being drunk and or sleepy enhances your creativity. This is like deja vu all over again. I Actually, I think uh, yeah, we we may have evidence of that here. Uh, <laughs> Water. <laughs> <laughs> sure, mine's not. No. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I better look at the production budget. <laughs> Vodka's exp more expensive than donuts. <laughs> So, so you, you're buying this? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Does your job require you to be creative? And drunk. Does, it, does your job require you to be drunk? <laughs> yes. Okay. To be creative. To be creative. Does your job require you to be creative, though? Oh, uh, yes, actually. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, th will this be the excuse you use, you use for your boss when you show in plastered on Monday? It, well, it's, I've already <laughs> been there, done that. Okay. Yeah. It's square pegs, round hole kind of creativity thing, you know. So, do you think meetings would, would go better? I'll, I'll go with Janet this one. Meeting, would meetings go better if we were drunk? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how drunk, though. I mean, if you have a little bit just to grease the wheels and everyone gets a little happy, that's good. But then, you know, you can have a little too much. You could get the belligerent drunk going on. The meetings could devolve into fist fights. I mean, so... Isn't it, that it, creative? I mean, and that's what lowers the IQ. It's creative, but yeah, then your IQ gets, you know with the head injuries, so there, there's got to be a balance. All right. A little drunk, not too drunk. All right, Scott, as a drunkard, are you insulted no one in Hollywood has asked you to write scripts for them and develop shows? 
I don't know if I'm insulted, um, but I think it's probably uh, wise on their part because if I were to hand them a script that I were to write, it would be covered in nothing but drool, spit, and vomit. So that's but that's when you're sober, right? Yeah. See, I need to drink to you know. But I, you can turn out great stuff when you're when you're drunk, right? I don't know about great. I mean, you know, I well, tried. I, I wrote that whole Powerpuff Girls thing, and that never took off. Yeah, it so. did. That was it, awesome. It that did. was awesome. It did. Yeah. They didn't get any of the big royalty checks? No, nah, I think someone stole it from me while I was passed out. Uh-oh. Well, see, you better you better talk to your lawyer about well, that. Well, okay, here's here's my issue, and I understand that, you know, meetings would go better drinking, and Jenna alluded to this. Um, my problem is, is that over the course of the meeting, people's speech would tend to, you know, would degrade a little bit. So I think it would all of a sudden become counterproductive. I think you'd do the full circle of life where everything would start great with the wheels greased and then eventually it turns into people just kind of slobbering and drooling and not being able to enunciate their words properly. And how would that, how would that hurt? Well, I can, I can understand it, but for the rest of you mere mortals, I know you guys can't wrap your minds around you know, drunk speak. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> uh, just like, you think this, uh, I'll tell you, you, Teresa, do you think this study was sponsored by bars? Yes, I don't think bars tend to care too much about your creativity. I, I was going to say alcohol does does help with creativity. Perhaps bars would like to help people with this. It helps with things like if you're trying to figure out the best way to climb over a barbed wire fence, or how best to escape from the cops, or how to jump <laughs> from one like building to another. Things you've thought about that before it, the show it, today, right? Yes, but okay. usually, how do you think she got the influence, here? of course? Oh, that's that's yeah, good. I know. But the, the, solutions to these issues come much easier with alcohol, of course. Would your company's so, meetings be more productive if they were held during happy hour? I think they would. Yeah, okay. we'd all be friends. We'd all just say, "Sure, whatever you want. You're awesome." That's how it would end. Okay. Everybody telling each other they're awesome, and that's that's all. Will you be putting that Hugs in the suggestion around. box over at the office there? Believe it or not, another true story. Uh, Starting in May, we're going to have Friday morning mimosa brunches at my office, oh, which is so, going to be fun. So meetings won't be that bad then, right? You're no, it'll be fun. But like I said, we're all going to be good friends after that when, once those start. So yeah, I think that will. It's work all going to go than much smoother. Thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'll work much better than the flash mob idea. Yeah, better than the flash mob. I love the flash. Well, you'll mob be able to do the flash suck. mob once you get them liquored up and with mm-hmm. some you nice right. 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 I know. That's right. All right. Combos. Okay, so I think we're out of time for this segment, so let's go to our first break. All right, we're back from the break. I hope we all enjoyed our, our three-hour nap. Anyways, issue number three is how well you remember dependent on your gender. Researchers at the University of Montreal Louis H. LaFontaine Hospital have concluded that a woman's memory of an experience is less likely to be accurate than a man's if it was unpleasant and emotionally provocative. The study examines how valence and arousal affect memories independently of each other, or in other words, how attractive or repulsive we find the experience and how emotionally provocative it is. Women remember pleasant experiences better than men, and men recall the unpleasant ones more accurately. But you know what's hard to forget? This. Butterball's attempt to go down the stairs. Come on, Butterball. Come on, baby. That is so cute. I think the women, so all the women in the studio just <laughs> ovulated. But so cute. Anyways. All right. So, I was waiting for it to fall down the stairs, for God's sakes. You buying this? Uh, where was the money shot in there? Anyway. <laughs> the, the money shot was the cuteness, James. So oh. That's why you're not ovulating at the moment. <laughs> yeah, and they are. For that. That. <laughs> you buying this or not? Not the ovulating part, the uh, part with the uh, men having better uh, memories of bad experiences no, versus women of good no. experiences. I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> I think I have an ex-wife who uh, will prove otherwise. You mean she remembers everything? Every bad thing ever. Okay. This woman had a memory like an elephant. No, uh, she didn't. <laughs> With, without a height. Because the elephant would eventually forget. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's true. So she, she well, so she has, a, uh, so she has an ironclad memory of unpleasant experiences. Oh yeah. How about pleasant ones? Assuming not, there were any. Not so much. Not so much? 
So it's the maybe she was the man in the relationship, James. Oh yeah, you know now it all makes sense. There you go. <laughs> 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 Teresa, you buying this or not? Um, I think the study's findings are way off base. Um, I do think women tend to remember unpleasant experiences for much longer because how else would we nag, right? And well, no, men have, don't you, remember anything at all. Could they just all be false memories? No. Okay. We, we never exaggerate. Women, that, if, if you must know one thing about women, we never exaggerate or make things up. Never. Never? Never. never. <laughs> How much can you weigh? Never. <laughs> 110. Okay. Okay. I think that's, we have a story here on that in the discard file, so I'll just 120. <laughs> Jenna, you buying this? I don't know. I know that emotion can affect the way that you view things and remember things. I mean, I think I have kind of an atypical memory in that I've had several head injuries in my life and I just don't remember things very well. I don't know if that's because of the head injury or other things. So anyway, I don't feel like a very good expert on memory issues. What did you do to injure your head? Uh, I was in a car accident when I was a kid mm -hmm. and my stroller was hit and I kind of landed on my head um, mm -hmm. and knees. But yes, head ends. Um, and then I got hit in the head with a baseball bat accidentally in Ex elementary school. Accident. Like when he was practicing, and then I walked behind him, and he didn't see me, and I didn't see him, and whack, oh and God. some other things too. But you know, yeah. So. And you managed to get this. Your parents didn't just have you through puberty just wearing that big helmet. <laughs> you, you think <laughs> I would boy. need it by that point? But yes, I I don't know if that is why my memory is so poor. But that's beside the point. Yeah. So, Scott, you, you, you've, you've on previous shows mentioned your wife remembers everything. Uh, are those memories accurate? Okay, okay. If your wife wasn't in the audience watching you, now, answer the question. Would those memories be accurate? Everything she does is 100% accurate and 100% perfect. <laughs> okay. Good answer. All right. Um, so, so you just obviously disagree with this uh, conclusion. 100%. Right? Right. Um, but I will say that there was a missed, uh, there's a missed correlation from the study that I don't think they put in. Um, the correlation between men's painful experiences to women's pleasurable experiences. Well, are they the same thing? I, I think I think they're inextricably linked. James, is it, you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty true. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Ladies, do you agree? <laughs> I agree. So when you're when you're having pleasant experiences, it. we're having un, 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 unpleasant ones. But is that we're, right? we're, we're and vice right. versa. Yeah. And vice versa. Well, no, and I would say it's actually more of a uh, situation of causation where the men's pain is causing the woman's pleasure. I would say exactly. it goes even deeper than that. Oh, okay. Exactly. Let's go to issue number four. So we don't run out of time. <laughs> issue number four is a distraction from pain better than Novocaine. And if you look over there, will it hurt less? Right here. Study researcher Jason Buell at Columbia University found that test subjects felt less pain when focusing on complex mental problems while being subject to said physical pain. When coupled with the placebo, they experienced even less pain and some felt none at all. The findings point to possible drug-free ways of treating pain. Let's look at some of their research footage here. Oh my God! <laughs> not even surprised. Yeah, I wonder. I did not see that coming. Insurance covers, you know, lost fingers and digits for being oh. bitten off by an alligator there. But you, you notice he wasn't distracted at all. It probably hurt a lot, don't you think? No, he's probably drunk and sleepy and just came out of a meeting. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thought it was a good idea. <laughs> well, but uh, well, probably did think it was a good idea. But he had he had customers, paid customers watching it. So you know, there you go. All right. So uh, Jenna, agree or dis? You buying this or not? Absolutely. Because? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, this is why you yes. research the show. Um, when, when I experience pain and I'm able 
when you hurt and you put your mind on something else, like if, you know, I start reading a book or I watch a movie or I go do something, the experience of the discomfort is way increased than if I just sit there thinking about, oh my gosh, it's hurt so much. It's you mean, you mean much. way decreased than if you were thinking about it, right? Correct. <laughs> Don't worry. If I'm, if I'm doing things, the pain hurt, hurts less. Does yeah. it ever not hurt at all? Um, if you can sufficiently distract yourself from discomfort, I mean, it depends on the kind of discomfort, but... How would you, what would you recommend for our fellow with the, with the missing fingers and the alligator here? I think he's beyond help there. That, that's a bad idea. Okay, so... Stop no, going to so many meetings, because oh. he needs some IQ increases. So nose picking is, was not a distraction for him, right? <laughs> he, right? I would recommend a lobotomy for him. Lobotomy? Yeah. <laughs> well, Scott, you've, you've described your life as... as your daily life is agony 24-7. What distractions would you use to lessen the pain? Um, mo painkillers. Okay. No, no. Mixed with alcohol. Oh, okay. But that's, is that really a distraction? And tranquilizers. Is that really a distraction? Sure, just taking all those pills is a lot of work, man. All right. It is, okay, because I, I figured this was, the purpose of the study was to find drug-free alternatives to pain. But I, I get that, but I, I just, for me, um, being drug free is pain. Oh, okay. You see, it's it, when it becomes a necessary uh, when it becomes a necessary part of your life. Being without the drugs is automatically pain. So, anything you pass. So now, if they want to speak on in terms of after I'm properly medicated as I'm supposed to be, uh, you know, at that point I don't really feel any pain anyway. But if sure, if I could feel some extra, maybe some distraction or playing some tic tac toe might help. But all right, all right, Teresa, would this explain the appeal of? Uh Gossip shows or sports on TV. Those are good things. But they are distractions, aren't they? From my inner pain? From your yes. daily pain, yes. Yes, my inner pain, my oh. tortured soul. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be writing poetry, awful poetry. Okay. Yeah, so, so it's better that I just waste my time so watching trash emo. reality shows. I would, yes. And the eyeliner. No idea, oh, no idea. You're terrible. So, so you know, all the Going gossip shows rave, distract from really? your workday work day pain of trying to set up flash mobs that fail? Don't remind me. And the meetings. It's really sad. Yeah. Dressed up as a furry. <laughs> Is that why you play words with friends during your during your meetings? Um, I often I, I go on Facebook. There you go. All right. I'm on Facebook most of the time. Right. Hey James. I when my IQ goes down. <laughs> if, you, if you got if you ever had to go to a dentist for a root canal, would you just uh, instead just say no Novocaine? I'll just do this crossword puzzle. No 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 no. I'd I'd, I'd ask the uh, the hot hygienist to come in and strip for me. Oh. That would work. Like a that, that would, would work? be distracting. That I think in that case, alcohol well, would work just as well. It's not a drug. Yeah. But is it but a distract, being hung over a distraction? Well, it helps you think of more creative ways to deal with your pain. There you go. But see, that's the thing, James. When, when you're working, you're, you're lying flat. How would, how would the stripper hook, strip up there? And Mirrors. Okay. All trapezes. Right. There's, all right. there's all kinds of ways to work it. All right. Okay, so we're done with the segment. Let's go to our second break. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We are back for our fact checking segment where we do or the discard pile where we do stories that we were thinking of doing but we didn't because no one picked them. All right. First story. Android users are more likely to put out than iPhone users. Uh, James, agree or disagree? You're an Android user, right? Uh, yeah. Agree or disagree? What's the question again? Android mm -hmm. users are more likely to put out than iPhone users. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Teresa? Um, I have an Android, but the thing is there's so many more Android phones than iPhones. I don't think that makes too much sense. Perhaps it means we're just much more friendly people. We're not snobs, unlike iPhone users. Okay. Apple well, fanatics. That's what you tell yourself, right? Because you, yes. you're stuck with We're just Android. friendly, more open people. Right. Yeah. Jenna? I'm really disappointed because I thought this question was about robots, and, and then iPhones came in, and I realized that... It's not about robot users that put out. No, I think that if we get if we go fast enough, we might get to that point. But yes, but no, yes, no sex robots for you yet. Damn. All right. Now, Scott, you. Used <laughs> I need some alcohol for my pain. Yeah, yeah. Scott, you used to be an Android owner. Now you're an iPhone owner. What's your take on this? Uh, I figured I just wanted to be as big of a d bag as everyone else that lived around me. So I figured I'd go ahead and. There we go. You mean the other iPhone <laughs> users? Yeah. Okay. That, thanks, I appreciate that. But yeah. but did you did you did your putting outness change at all? Did you notice? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just still zero, right? Yeah. Pretty much, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. Next story. Uh, according to Match.com or the survey of Match.com users, uh, Democrats have sex more often than Republicans, but Republicans uh, express more satisfaction with sex. So, James, buying this or not? Um. <laughs> 
Quality over I, quantity. Hmm. One, quality is, one has the quantity, one has the quality. Okay, yeah, I don't know. That's like, that's a weird one. You know, who, who does that study, you know? Match.com. Match.com, yeah, okay. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're in the group that says don't ask, don't tell. You declined to state? There yeah. you go. Is it um, that Republicans are more picky or they lie more? Oh, no, survey, do. survey data. <laughs> so that, that's, the, that's your story you're sticking to? It? I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's the Democrats who lie more. <gasps> yes, maybe they're saying they have We're having made. all kinds of sex. Yes. It's because they're hippies. They're hippies. They're bunch hippies. Bunch of hippies. Free, no. free love. Pick. Free love. Well, like I said, Democrats, bunch of hippies, free love, very liberal. So that would certainly explain the, the quantity. Um, as far as Republicans' quality, I don't know. All I can, they're probably lying. But okay. that's all I could say. Probably. Everyone lies. Yeah, everyone's lying. Scott? Well, I think the study is actually pretty accurate. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely drunk, hippie, drug use, but you know, that's some of your drunk sex is really not the best sex, so that makes sense. And if Republicans have only been with like one or two people their entire lives, they don't know any better, so of course it's great. So you know, I would say the study is, uh, is on par. Right. Because they only had sex with one or two people. Uh, yeah, what are they? Ergo, of course it's great. Or they're just, well, ha they, they they're, just they're happy they're finally having sex. Oh, there you go. And shouldn't that be, shouldn't that be the case? Eh, who knows? Maybe not, but. Mm. All right, next story. Obesity could be infectious. Scott, buying this or not? I see you gaining weight just being next to me. I see, I see you gaining weight just being next to me. I just can't wait to stand more. I just can't wait to stand closer to Teresa Jen and Jenna. Have them start to no, please don't sizes. stay over there. Ladies, you buying this? I'll see you. Jenna's doubly screwed. She's between me and him. <laughs> I forgot. Don't 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 think don't think I missed a little freaking mini keg on the front of your shirt there, dude. Well, if they're right. talking about like yeah, the but at least it's loose. People in the same family having similar weights. That would be because they eat together and they eat the same kind of things. And maybe are you they bragging have... about your shirt being loose? <laughs> no. I well, think... and your friends too. Okay, if you well, hang out with friends, your shirt can cover an lot. acre of land, and you're bragging about being loose. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I think they said that uh, obese people have a. A bacteria in their liver or in their in tract that gets out. That's oh, that's interesting. Oh. Oh like a tapeworm, my. but reverse. Okay. Like rever you. reverse tapeworm. All right, so I got one more story. That's let's very see here. Disturbing. I'm not going to do that one. Not going to do that one. Not going to do that because one. Because tapeworms. Oh, get uh, let's see here. Uh, I'll do this yes. one instead. Make you never gain weight. Yes. Uh, team building yeah. does not gotcha. improve work. Uh, study says a team building does not improve work. Uh, Teresa, you, since you organize flash mobs, you buying this or not? Um, yes, I agree, because team building, team building involves happy things, um, happy hours, drinking, team building, it really has nothing to do with work, it's just an excuse to hang out. James, okay, okay, oh, we're out of time, sorry about that. All right, so, thank you very much for the show, everybody, great job, great job, thanks to the crew. Later.